Hello, my name is Pierce Katai, and for my U.S. history final, I decided to learn about the KKK, more specifically the three distinct secret movements at different points of time in history. So, in 1866, six Confederate veterans founded the Ku Klux Klan in Pulaski, Tennessee, as a social club. The name of the clan was derived from the Greek word kaiklos, meaning circle, and a Scottish Gaelic word meaning clan. In the summer of 1867, local branches of the clan met in a general organizing convention and established what they called an invisible empire of the South. Former Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest was chosen as the first leader which was officially known as the Grand Wizard of the clan. He presided over a hierarchy of Grand Dragons, Grand Titans, and Grand Cyclopes. The KKK rapidly grew from a secret social fraternity to a paramilitary, paramilitary force bent on reversing the federal government's progressive reconstruction era activities in the South especially policies that elevated the rights of the local African-American population. And in 1869, Nathan Forrest unsuccessfully tried to disband the KKK after he grew critical of the amount of violence that they used. From 1867 onward, African-American participation in public life in the South became one of the most radical aspects of Reconstruction, as blacks won election to Southern state governments and even to the U.S. Congress. For its part, the Ku Klux Klan dedicated itself to an underground campaign of violence against Republican leaders and voters both black and white, in an effort to reverse the policies of radical reconstruction and restore white supremacy in the South. They were joined in this struggle by similar organizations such as the Knights of the White Camellia, which was in Louisiana in 1867, and the White Brotherhood. At least 10% of the black legislators elected during the 1867 to 1868 constitutional conventions became victims of violence, violence during Reconstruction, and seven people were killed. Because the Klan was attacking Republicans, Democrats relied on them to secure election victories, as Klan men oftentimes threatened or killed competing Republican candidates. Constantly living in fear, many Southern Republicans abandoned their campaigns due to the inability to hold meetings and attract voters. If Democrats could not achieve desired results using sheer violence, the Klan usually voted for literary literacy tests and conducted voter fraud to dilute the black vote. This happened most frequently in districts composed of nearly equal numbers of African American and white voters where the Klan felt they must assert control over Reconstructionist, more progressive racial systems. In 1867, the KKK Act passed Congress, and that act authorized, it authorized President Grant to use military force to suppress them. The KKK Act resulted in nine South Carolina counties being placed under martial law and thousands of arrests. In 1882, the U.S. Supreme Court declared the KKK Act unconstitutional, but by that time, Reconstruction had ended and the KKK had faded away. So about 40 years later, in 1950, 1915, sorry, the KKK was revived atop Stone Mountain, Georgia, by William Joseph Simmons, on Thanksgiving night, after riding with about 15 other men in a rented tour bus to a large granite formation outside of the city known as Stone Mountain, he, they lit a wooden cross aflame and announced the rebirth of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. The second clan was mainly based on the wildly popular film, The Birth of a Nation. The first clan had not worn the white costumes or burned crosses 
as these were aspects introduced in the film The Birth of a Nation. When the film was shown in Atlanta in December of that year, Simmons and his new clansmen paraded to the theater in ro robes and pointed hoods, many on robbed horses, just like in the movie. These mass parades would become another hallmark of the new clan that had not existed in the original Reconstruction Era organization. Ideologically, the clan blended xenophobia, religious prejudice, and white supremacy together with a broadly conservative moralism. The second KKK preached 100% Americanism and offered members a platform that demonized blacks, Catholics, Jews, Mexicans, Asians, and any other non-white ethnic immigrants, while they also condemned communism, most other forms of leftist politics, and base cultural influences such as alcohol, birth control, and the teaching of evolution in public schools. What happened next wasn't that surprising. Their views and what they did prompted violence. From the late 1910s through the 1920s, Klansmen carried out hundreds of beatings and whippings and dozen whippings and dozens of murders. They threatened bootleggers, flogged Mexicans, tarred and feathered doctors who performed abortions and strong armed politicians. They lynched black people, showed up on night rides to terrify prostitutes, bullied Jews, and last young woman found riding in cars with men. Presidents Harding and Coolidge both opposed the Klan, and as the years went on, a growing number of public officials and important citizens who had joined the Klan as its numbers increased in the early 1920s turned against the organization as it became clear that they had cast their lot less with a salutary fraternal society than with a conspiracy that countenanced sadists and fanatics. The summer of 1925 in Washington, D.C. would prove to be the symbolic high point of the 1920s Ku Klux Klan. By the end of the decade, its numbers had dwindled practically into insignificant numbers. Its decline was caused mainly by mainly because of problems within the clan the fierceness and const constancy of its opponents and changing socio-economic and political context that deprived the clan much of the energy that gave them life today many sources classify the clan as a subversive or terrorist organization in April 1997, FBI agents arrested four members of the True Knights of the Ku Klux Klan in Dallas for conspiracy to commit robbery and for conspiring to blow up a natural gas processing plant. In 1999, the City Council of Charleston, South Carolina, passed a resolution declaring the Klan a terrorist organization. As of June 2017, about 40 clan groups are still operating in about 33 states. Thank you.